All right, YouTube, we're coming to you today with a Corona special. This is just an intro to a video series. It's long and some might call it boring <laughs> if you were alive, uh, but many people are bored right now, so we figured it'd be a perfect opportunity to put this video series out. Um, as you can see, we've got the house playing in the background. I can't legally use that footage, so I'm not gonna publish it, but it might just happen to be in the background. Um, I did not film it myself, just in case you're watching FAA. But anyway, as you know, I fly airplanes usually, but we, we bought this property, we built this house, and you guys have surely seen it. And we used to be in town, and that was an awesome neighborhood that we were in, we had really good neighbors. But we are just getting done with a bridge project to get from the side where the house is on to the side where the house isn't. And as you can probably tell from watching this video in the background, we've got trees that wrap around the house, and we would show you through the windows, but it's really bright. So we're not gonna do that and script the video. Anyway, the whole purpose of this video is to just give you a quick intro of what you're going to be seeing in the video series because it's long and some would argue tedious. So without further ado, we are going to flip over to some images here so you can kind of see what we're talking about. Uh, this is where our house is. Um, obviously the runway goes something like this. And then we're building a bridge down here. This was a, a small man bridge and we called this Poopers Point. I won't go into detail. but. <laughs> At any rate, we cleared that area as one of the first areas we cleared, but we actually built this bridge here called the Deadfall Bridge. And the Deadfall Bridge was actually uh, using a dead tree that fell over in a big storm. Um, it was not the same storm that took out these trees, which we'll talk about later. Uh, two of these trees we used, they got killed in the storm, uh, slipped down the side of a slope, and our septic guy actually grabbed one out with his excavator and pulled it up. And then I use my lawnmower to move around the gigantic log, which I had to cut in half to move. And then I damaged my zero turn and decided I would get a proper tractor, which was still very small, which you'll also see in the video. <laughs> and uh, the bridge we built was originally designed to uh, bear the load of the zero turn in a trailer in myself and then a bunch of stuff in the trailer. And later we redesigned it to take the load of the full tractor myself and something behind it. So it's probably rated for somewhere between five and 10,000 pounds and I've not figured out exactly what it is. But this is where we are spatially from the runway. It's over here. And we need a bridge because those trees aren't just trees. There's actually There's creek. creek that runs the all the way through. Here. Yep. So we're on a peninsula from the road. And yes, you could drive down this ditch, except that it's at a 45 degree angle. Yeah. So you'd be risking your life going down the hill and you sure wouldn't be able to get back out. So anyway, we built this bridge here to get back so we can um, farm this land back here. And that's another video that's coming soon, but it's not part of the series on how we're gonna try to take hay on this property. And we're gonna do grass hay, and we may later switch to another blend of custom hay, or we might do alfalfa. But anyway, if you're not into that, don't worry about it. It's not part of this video, but we did need a way to get around. Um, this bridge also failed eventually because the deadfall bridge was just a, a big dead tree and it broke. So we could still get across it, but it's precarious when it was new and now it's very precarious. So we have to do some repairs if we decide to use it. But without further ado, we're just gonna walk through real quick on some images. Uh, you can see from this footage, this is what we're, we're getting to the other side of this so that we can go back here. And our property ends at the creek, which is in this wooded area. It's actually almost all the way through the wooded area. Um, so we'll just walk back and show you. This was the, the, the first little man bridge we had at Hooper's Point, and we pulled that out, and that's gonna be in the very end of the series. And of course, we've got this tractor here. We've got a, a counterweight on the back, and then we've got the forks on the front, and we've run across it with fully loaded tractor so far. And it weighs uh, about 3,250 pounds and no issues on the bridge. So this is what the bridge looks like. It was snowing today, the day that we took this, and it was muddy. And of course, there's uh, three logs that hold it up and then there's two additional logs in there uh, that are hickory and they're really strong This is hickory and we actually had to take that down by shooting it down, which is part of the video series part two It's really long uh, So hopefully you enjoy it. It's beautiful little creek area and this little babbling brook here. It babbles most of the time except for when The middle of the summer the water level goes down quite a bit it Still flows underground, but you don't see as much surface water and then during the rain of course it gets really crazy so um, the finished grading here and then all these little flags you see are different trees or groups of trees or bushes. We planted a hundred of them 
and we mentioned that throughout the series. But this is what we ended up with. We're really happy with it. it it's worked really nicely. Um, we used SPACs for the fasteners, and these are uh, green treated uh, 2 by 10 16 footers and then 2 by 10 8 footers, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, I think so. And then the logs underneath, of course, are just found on the property. Uh, like I said, the one was actually uh, ripped down in half. They're about 15 and a half. Uh, to 16 feet long and they're buried in the ground um, and then concreted in and so this whole series is just going to outline kind of our process we used um, these are some stills that we took a lot of the work we did was in the middle of the night or not necessarily in the middle of the night but it was dark enough that you just couldn't film and so we wanted to maybe not totally miss that uh, some of the decision making process happened throughout the video series so obviously you'll you'll see me waffling you're used to that <laughs> um, so like in this case, I had two by fours instead of a two by 10. And I ultimately ended up going with a 16 foot two by 10. So throughout the project, you also notice these two pallets. We did not film the process of putting the two pallets together, but that was a fiasco because we needed a construction bridge that we could run across, um, our bodies and the materials. So we kind of evaluate how we switched from that into the actual construction of the bridge. And we took a lot of pictures, a lot of pictures. And then we used concrete to fill in the saddles that we dropped the logs down in the ground. And so that's gonna keep them from rolling. And of course I go over all this. We ended up just, we ended up doing, I think these are 60 pound bags and we did uh, six of those. So we did three on each side and we just mixed it up and put it straight in the hole. And then some of it, we actually just mixed right in the hole. So that worked out good. But as you can see, we've got the uh, tractor. There's not a counterweight on it here. But uh, we do the testing um, at that stage. That was one of the first runs across there. And you can tell because this hasn't been broken, that broke because I didn't backfill it and I kept testing it. And I eventually broke one of the boards. But underneath it was holding up beautifully. And so as we go through the series, of course, there was a couple of different um, additions to the uh, tractor family, like the forks. As you can see, the big long logs. This is hickory. And then I don't know what these were, but they were certainly not hickory. They're about half the weight, maybe a third the weight of the hickory. And the hickory one is the one that we had to shoot down. And uh, the rationale, there's my wonderful camera crew helping me. She was thrilled to be there that night. Mm -hmm. She loves working in the middle of the night outside in the it's dark It's really cold. cold or really hot. That's right. There's our cat that adopted us. So as you can see, we just dug out saddles and we dropped the logs in there. And so again, this is all part of the process. You get to watch it all happen. We use the auger to drill a couple of holes and then we cut them together with a regular um, shovel. And then of course, as we work our way back in time, you'll notice that we are just kind of getting things positioned. You can see here where we've got it strapped to the tree to keep things from falling over because these logs were really heavy. It's like literally thousands of pounds of logs. This was the day we pulled out the um, construction bridge. And then you can see these are the, the extra hickory um, logs that we didn't, one of them we didn't use and then two of them we did. We just left them underneath, but they don't actually contact the bottom of the decking. So you can see there's my camera crew, really happy. She must've been faking it good there. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. There's me risking my life to move the log across the bridge. It always seems easy when you're writing it down on paper until you go to do it. And you're like, what is wrong with us? Why are we so dumb? <laughs> Here's the markings for a 36 inch on center. That's the inside dimension or not the inside, but the center of the, the tires on the tractor. And then this is the 67.5 inches, the center of the tires on a work truck in my case, or the, we have a traverse. So. Um, either way, you can, you can drive across with a vehicle and then you'll notice that there's some trees and things that ultimately ended up having to be cleared. Uh, but this big tree we didn't want to lose and maybe someday if we have to bring a proper vehicle across, we will. This is the tree that we had to finish. It, it was dead, but we had to cut it over, knock it down to um, get that wood available. And then these are the two that the septic guy pulled out, which was actually one long log. And the guy about ran his excavator into the creek doing that for us. So we thank you. And uh, these things did a number on this bracket, which I found out it was $145 for that bracket. So then I bought a tractor three days later. <laughs> so, but you can see I'm dragging 
I'm dragging this log through the dirt with my zero turn. That is not a good idea. <laughs> this is a Z655 and it does not have enough power to do that. Um, that's how we manipulated those logs around. I did that on my own. I lost a pin that day, that was fun. And then this is more of the waterway, just a little bit beyond where Pooper's Point sits. And that's where the bridge is right now. You can kind of see this two steps right here. So we're building the bridge right there. And that where we built the bridge is about the narrowest point. Yeah. You didn't see the waffling on that either. You, you can see this, these logs. I was literally moving these by hand. And then there's our little man bridge that we had initially done on mm -hmm. this side. Because you got to remember, it's a long ways away from the other deadfall bridge that we had built. And there's some pictures of the kids playing. We got four kids. And there's a good one coming up of our son, <laughs> our youngest one, climbing a tree. Here's him climbing it. Mm -hmm. And then there's our one of our other daughters. <laughs> she was using her cell phone to take pictures. That's her cell phone. So he's climbing the tree there. So this was the other tool I used, which is the... Um, that's what we used before we got a tractor, was the <laughs> sled, <laughs> which is ridiculous. Uh, you can see I was dragging this, and uh, I was also doing a little plowing at the same time. <laughs> but the idea is um, we had to clear the area first, and so we start out our video series by burning a lot. And uh, don't want you a guys lot. to get the right idea. This, this here is the log. We had to cut it in half, and it was grown around by all the foliage that had grown in during that one season that was like 12 feet tall. So, um, yeah, it, it was pretty incredible. Just dragging those things. I could not believe I did that with this track and with my little zero turn. Um, I about broke the zero turn in half. <laughs> so when I talked to the John Deere guy about that bracket, that's, that's when I decided I was gonna build a, I was gonna get a tractor. So you can see this pallet was about this long and then I used four by fours and four by sixes in between. And that was a pretty cool process. I wish we would have filmed it, but we had help, I believe on that project. And it was very hard for both uh, Megan and I, my camera crew to do that. So we just didn't have any opportunity to film. Um, and you can see we had tried to put a log underneath because originally we thought we might be able to just brace this and drive across it because when properly supported that pallet would have supported a great deal of weight. So as you can see, nothing something we were burning there we had a pile 15 feet high there. all of that and anything that's dirt was yeah. all totally you this couldn't is, walk through this there this is impassable mm -hmm. and um some people like that and we think it looks crazy and a lot of it was honeysuckle which is invasive here so the dnr worked with us and they want us to to take that out so we're taking it out and we don't like it either it's grows grows a lot of leaves and it's good for ground cover to a certain extent, except then it blocks everything out and you don't get ground cover and then you got a lot of erosion that happens. So we were using bricks to just kind of be a, a footing for that. And this is another one of our fires. And I got this uh, walk, catwalk topping, whatever you want to call it. I don't know. I thought maybe it'd be a little more supportive. It wasn't a plant was thrown away, so I took it. And we used that. It was nice because you got a lot of traction on it. There's my wonderful wife. She's really pleased to be in that picture. <laughs> and we were burning. And uh, more burning. I mean, we did a lot. A lot of burning. A lot of burning. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were doing a lot of pruning. As you can see, that tree ended up getting lost, I think. But that's kind of how we started this whole project. And uh, when we started, this, this was after we cleared it a number of times. It was so crazy in here that you could not walk because uh, it was just nothing but huge plants and stuff. Not a lot of trees necessarily, but there were some trees and saplings. Um, and as you can see, this is where our fuel tank is now. And those were some of the trees that were in that area. And then this was the one that we pulled out. Um, I had already cut that with the chainsaw. I actually pushed that tree down by accident when I was trying to cut it down. I cut a wedge and then I pushed the whole tree over, including the root structure, because it was rotten. There was ants in it. So that's what we used underneath there for our construction bridge. And this is kind of our initial clearing that we were working with. And the reason I show you this was our uh, man bridge. And that's, I believe, what it looked like maybe right before we started. Oh, no, that's just downstream a little bit. But the whole idea behind showing you this, um, and then you can see where the, the fuel tank is. This has all been really tidied up a lot, and we want those trees to grow big and strong. And there's, 
literally hundreds of thousands of saplings. And so if you don't clear some of those out, then everything just fights for the sunlight and chokes each other out. And then you have oaks that are like 100 years old that end up dying because they get choked out by like a uh, black walnut. So that's the quick overview. And this is pretty much where we start the video series. Um, but you'll be able to see that, just some of our burning. I mean, we burn for like, I don't know, two weeks, just uh, junk garbage wood and lots of stuff like this, just overgrown bushes and lots of vines in the trees. And um, it's still beautiful down there. But this is where we left. And so without further ado, we're gonna jump right into the video process. We hope you enjoy it. And guys, stay safe. Corona is nothing to mess with. I understand the world has been impacted a lot. We're not alone in that. Uh, we're just kind of getting our share of it now, finally. And uh, luckily, I've been able to work, but who knows if that'll keep it up. And uh, we just hope that everybody's safe. You can enjoy this video series. This will take up at least two to three weeks of quarantine, just this one video. So come back for more, guys. I promise you, this week, there will be an RC video. I promise. Come back for more. So we're here doing a little bit of burning tonight. Looks so cool. Three different spots right now. Some more nearly cleared paths here. I'm only shooting up about 12 feet. <laughs> Looks like cool. And there's a house up there. Awesome. It's burning so fast, it almost looks fake. Crazy. Pile's not very small. N neither is this log. That's going to be the supports for the vertical supports on here. Going fast. Oh, it's getting hot really quick. Holy crap, that's burning fast. Make it a new exit hole. <laughs> yep, it's hot. And that's from all over there, a bunch of dead trees. And then all this area here, of course, this is the access to the back half of our property that we're trying to work out. This is an our yard where the grass is taller as our yard. And we're just clearing this area so we can make a bridge crossing. Obviously that's what I want to cross. We got these pallets here together for now and just need to get um, it's about 14.8 from pallet to pallet here. There's two pallets with four by fours hooking them together. So it's pretty sturdy. And I got this uh, catwalk stuff from a plant that was getting rid of it. I'm going to cut these both at 60 inches. I need 53 inches under here. So the 60 will give me some to squish into the mud. And this one needs 51 and I'll have whatever I have. I don't know if I'll cut the back off of that. But about half of this log is rotten, so I'm not expecting a tremendous amount of support from the rotten side. But it's so big, there's going to be tons of support. And all I want to get across is a John Deere uh, Z655, which weighs 625 pounds. Trailer and contents, so let's just call this 250 pounds. So there's 1,000, and then myself, and then maybe 200 pounds, or 250 pounds of overflow, so 1,500 pounds. I think we can get it done if we have a support in the middle of this. So we'll see. And if it doesn't work out, I'm going to get some logs about half as big as this and cut them at 15 feet long to go across, tap into the, the middle of these or miss them. I don't care. And then I'll just build decking across it so I can get back and forth. Speak of the devil. Okay. So we tipped it up on its side. Then we got this big, huge log over here and then another one over there. And we're going to set that down in the middle. Right where that leaf is, that leaf. And then we're gonna tip this back on there, which should engage this central area. And we'll use that to spike into it. See how that goes. So now, now we get to 
tip this thing over on top of this. And that's going to be fun because it's barely just kind of balancing in the mud. I don't know how this is going to go. But we'll see. 